Hey guys, Saltwater Jack here. In today's video, we're going to show you how we use this drone to find and catch redfish. We'll show you what we used, we'll show you where the fish were. At the end of this video, we have epic redfish eye candy. So stick around to the end of this video. Here we go. Hey guys, I want to plant a seed today with you. As fishermen, we are always willing to spend, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred dollars, some cases a thousand dollars for the latest and greatest electronics. Uh, these fish finders nowadays, they got a side scan, they got a down scan, they got a up scan. I mean, they got every kind of scan you can imagine for us as fishermen to try to find the fish. And what I decided to do today is use the drone as a tool to find the fish. Up until this point, I've only used the drone to do B-roll for the videos, uh, to find fish, just to kind of take some pictures so it'd be cool to post on TikTok or on YouTube or what have you, right? But we were having a tough, tough day. I mean, it was windy. Wow, that's great. Uh, we hadn't even seen a bait fish. So we changed locations, we went to Garen's Creek, right? And even when we got there, the wind was knocked down because we had some coverage and whatnot, but there were just nothing, there was nothing going on. And it was extremely frustrating because we felt like it was a beautiful day just before Friday. I mean, it was a perfect setup for us to catch fish. So anyways, I decided, hey, let's throw up the drone. Let's see if we can even find some redfish. Because as you know, this time of year, they're schooling. So, man, threw the drone up and right behind the boat, there's fish zooming right past us. We have our glasses on, we can't even see the fish. So once we threw that drone up, we were able to find bait fish. Well, guess what? I followed the bait fish. We were able to track down some red fish, right? So using this um, tool, using the drone as a tool, uh, we were able to save the day and catch fish, right? As we all say, you know, any day in the water is better than no day on the water, and that's wonderful, but we all like to feel a fish on our line. We don't want to come home and have to tell our significant others that, well, we didn't catch any fish, but man, it was a great day on the water, right? I don't know about you, but I've had to say that every now and then. So anyways, what I encourage you to do is maybe check out, I use the DJI Mini 2. I uh, have a little uh, Amazon uh, link down below if you want to check it out. Um, I know at Costco they have them on sale periodically because mine is a little bit older. It shoots in 4K. Something to think about. It's easy to fly. Really easy to fly. You don't have to have a pilot slice to fly it. It's really easy and it might save the day. Oh, nice, buddy! Oh, this is a big fish. Oh, yeah. So in this clip right here, you're going to see me cast out, hook into a fish, and of course, in the middle of the fight, my Osmo Action battery dies. So I don't get it on a camera other than the hookup. But what I'm going to show you is that, that, that Jason was actually, he was casting out in the middle of these red fish because I'm fighting my fish. He hooks up, so he gets a double hookup. He loses that fish. He casts out again, catches another fish, and so he had another hookup. So uh, while I'm fighting that fish and messing with uh, bringing my fish in, uh, Bunny ends up uh, hooking in twice, and he ends up landing one of the fish. Uh, but anyways, here's that clip, guys. Straight out there, just gone. You won't, you won't. There you go. And he hit me. Um, there you go. Yeah, brother. Small, small. That's okay. okay. 
Hey, he's a fish, isn't he? Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's fish. We found him. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Drone. Thank you, Mr. Drone. Oh, he's a fish guy. Might be a little bigger, dude. So nice to have a fish on. <laughs> oh, look at him moving to the. I can see him moving to the right. Oh, right in the middle of the fish. Oh, this is a better fish. Yours is a nice fish, bigger than mine. That's a nice fish, Jack. Oh, mine got off. Yeah, that's all right. Need any help with yours? Pro style. Nice. That's a that's a nice fish, brother. I got one. Oh, this is the better one. Yep. Uh, dude, this is a line dragger. Hey guys, so in this clip right here, you're going to see what we were using for that day. Uh, we were using the Z-Man 2.75 Green Pumpkin Gobi. Uh, we had the Chartreuse uh, Nedlock Hook. Uh, we were also using Blue Crab uh, Pro Cure, which you can see me putting on. Uh, we love this setup because as you can tell, we do more of a downward, the, the, the rod tip down, and we twitch, twitch, and then a little bit of pause. Okay, a twitch, twitch, and a pause. And so what happens, that lure, uh, I've watched it many times, of course, it'll jump this way and it'll jump this way, and then that, that lure will sit up, and so the fish, it's like a little worm to them, and they'll just come up and gobble it, but it looks like a little uh, bait fish swimming across the bottom. I uh, just recently attended the Hadrill's uh, Fishing Expo, and got to see C.A. Richardson, who I follow on YouTube, as well as I uh, got to see Greg Peralta, who fishes out at Charleston in many cases. Uh, he is considered uh, one of the best fishermen out of Charleston and he uses that same setup. Uh, biggest thing though guys is that uh, both of them kind of agree that hey you got to fish what you feel comfortable with. There's some guys that love paddle tails, there's some guys that, that love the gobies. Uh, you got to fish with what you feel comfortable with and that's where you're going to catch the fish. What I've noticed uh, through changing up my lures from time to time, redfish if they're there and they're hungry they're going to feed. Okay. They're gonna feed. So, anyways, here's that clip. Need some go juice? That's in my pocket. Okay. Oh, man. Nice. A little bit smaller, sorry. Nice. So I'm just pitching back towards that sort of that pocket. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he had a friend with him. He just turned off. Had a little friend with him. His buddy's like, nah, I don't know what that is, man. I'm not yeah, hanging yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. All right, buddy, just got him another fish. Nice red, beautiful. Hey, guys. So, as you can see over my shoulder, uh, rain clouds are coming in. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this video today. Um, as promised, I'm going to show you that redfish eye candy. Uh, make sure that you take the time to pause it and just look at some of those massive reds. Uh, that was shot up in Garrett Creek. Uh, a lot of people will ask me, Jack, why do you share your fishing spots? Um, you know, and my plain and simple answer to them is, well, even when I go there, I don't catch fish. Uh, we happen to get lucky and find the red fish. I mean, there's fish all over the place, right? So that's why I don't have a problem uh, sharing that, uh, that information. What you will find is that you could be right on top of the fish, throwing everything you can at them, and not catch them. That's just the way it goes, it's called fishing. But I know that a lot of you out there, uh, you don't have a lot of time to go out and search for these spots. Um, I'm finding that I don't have the time either. So I like to share this information. Uh, you know, Hopefully you're gonna 
uh, you know, if you catch them, you're going to release them. Um, which actually, if you uh, look up here, there's a link to where uh, I interviewed uh, the gentleman that was uh, there at the uh, Hadrill's Fishing Expo uh, for the Release Over 20 program. Uh, hopefully you guys are involved in that. I know we don't save our fish, we don't, we don't keep them, we throw everything back. So anyways, hopefully you gain some value. Please like and subscribe. Here's that video.